Ursula Weeks and I'm an art historian and I'd love to share with you some of my favourite Christmas paintings as Christmas is nearly upon us. Well, a fundamental concept at the heart of the Christian story of Christmas is incarnation. I wonder how you would define that concept. To me, it means an eternal being in human form. Now, I lived for seven years in India, and so Christianity does not only have a monopoly on that concept of incarnation. For example, this 18th century painting shows the 10 incarnations of Vishnu, whether his uh, incarnation as a fish, Matsya, as a boar, Varaha, or maybe more famously as the Prince Rama or the playful lover, Krishna. But the Christian concept of incarnation is located in a very specific historical moment. The time 2000 years ago when a boy was born in the Middle East, he was called Jesus and he was born at Bethlehem. This painting from the 13th century is from a Bible moralise or a moralised Bible. And it resonates with the very famous verses at the beginning of John's Gospel in the New Testament. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, without him nothing was made that has been made. I wonder if you can make out the solid gold leaf in the background here that speaks of the opulence of this image. And we see God as creator holding this enormous compass as he measures out the universe. That wonderful disc that he holds is not just the earth, but it has at its core this yellow formless object, that's the earth, surrounded by the blackness of the stars and then the blue and green rim of that great circle that he holds. The figure of God is enormous compared to the universe and he can't be contained. Look at how his foot steps out of the frame itself at the bottom. But I wonder, did you also notice that the face of God is in fact like the face of Jesus? It identifies the creator as the eternal world through whom all things were made. Islam also has a very high view of the word of God. And this next artwork is a beautiful contemporary work by the Jordanian artist Nasser Mansour. It conveys a single word the word kun. You can see the upright of the calf and the semicircle with the gold dot is the noon, making the word kun. And that word means be. It captures a very important concept about God's creation of the world, expressed in Surah 2 verse 117, which says, and God says, be, and it was. You see, in Islam, God writes the world into existence, and that's why calligraphy has such an important place in Islamic art. Christianity makes a very bold and dramatic claim that 2,000 years ago, the eternal word of God was made flesh and that he stepped into this world, born as a baby. Let's go back to John's gospel and a few verses later it says, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. This painting of the Annunciation depicts the angel Gabriel announcing to Mary that she will have a child despite being a virgin. Can you see the hands of God from the sunburst at the top left? and the ray of light coming towards Mary. There's a tiny dove on that ray of light, signifying the miraculous conception of the baby Jesus by the Holy Spirit, without any human father. The painting's divided into thirds, 
At the left, we see Adam and Eve cast out of the Garden of Eden. Their rejection of God, which brought condemnation, is going to be reversed by the salvation brought through this baby, Jesus Christ. Fra Angelico was one of the great painters of the 15th century in Florence. He was a Dominican monk, but he had access to all the finest pigments. Can you see the ultramarine of the Virgin's robe made of blue from lapis lazuli brought from Afghanistan? One of my favourite paintings of the Annunciation is this work by Antonello de Messina. It just shows us the Virgin Mary. She's pretty, she's devout, she's young, sitting at her rough wooden prayer table with her prayer book open. The roughness of the wood perhaps reminds us that she's betrothed to a carpenter. Her right hand is raised up in a gesture of surprise, showing us the angel Gabriel is there. And the strong lighting on her face also indicates that supernatural presence. We, the viewers, stand in the same sacred space as the angel. Mary is deep in thought, pondering the words that Gabriel has just spoken. Her left hand pinches her veil and at the same time points inwards towards herself, highlighting that role she's being asked to play. Well, Mary gave birth to a baby boy. And this next painting is by Hugo van der Goes and depicts a nativity scene. This nativity by Hugo van der Goes was commissioned in 1473 by a wealthy Florentine banker called Tommaso Portinari. He had it shipped all the way from the Netherlands to Italy, though it took quite a long time to arrive there. Mary and Joseph are on the left with some stable animals in the shadows behind them. There's a group of shepherds on the right who look like local lads from the 15th century Netherlands. There's also a beautiful still life of flowers in the foreground, full of Christian symbolism. The angels are portrayed on a much smaller scale than all the other figures, as if to emphasise that they come from another world. There's also a beautiful detail down in the bottom left corner of an outdoor shoe from the 15th century that's just been left there, as if somebody's popped out of the frame of the painting to go and do an errand and is about to come back again. But the most surprising feature is surely the baby boy, who is just apparently dumped on the ground with no parental arms to enfold him. Babies really should be in people's arms. We see this in many 15th century paintings of the nativity. And in some ways that detachment emphasizes to us that this baby is unique. He is God, he is fully divine as well as fully human. In the next work, prepare for a leap forwards of 500 years and perhaps a shock. It's a painting by the 20th century German artist Otto Dix. He painted it in 1927, the year his son Ursus was born. When I first saw this painting in Dresden, I wanted to walk on past it. It felt disturbing, but there was something magnetic about it that drew me back. It's a very, very new baby with its umbilical cord just cut. That's perhaps what grosses us out. But it's actually a healthy baby. Its cry is a good sign. That's what babies are meant to do. And its little blue toes and fingers are gradually turning pink, as they should. But let's face it, it is also a very disturbing painting. Somehow this baby alone and laid out on the white cloth with no parental hands to nurture it, it captures this truth that from our first days to our last days, life can be a real struggle for the, full of pain and difficulty. But I'm sure that Otto Dix intended something more. By laying the baby on that white cloth, 
he very deliberately refers back to all those 15th century paintings where the baby Jesus is just dumped on the floor in a nativity scene. He wants us to think about God born as a human baby. I wonder if you've ever stopped to consider why God needed to be born as a baby. It's fundamentally connected to the purpose of Jesus' suffering and death on the cross so that he could provide real and meaningful forgiveness for humanity. He needed to be human to be a real substitute. He needed to be fully God in order to pay the price for our wrongdoing. I want to end with this wonderful photograph taken in 1968 from the Apollo 8 mission. This was a year before the first landings on the moon and these were the first ever photographs taken showing the earth rising above the moon's horizon. The dates of the mission are very significant. On Christmas Eve 1968 there was a live television broadcast from Apollo 8 as it orbited the moon and the astronauts read passages from Genesis 1 about God's creation of the world. This is a photograph with an enormous cultural impact that completely reorients how we see ourselves. For the first time, we could see ourselves, our Earth, not as the centre of everything, but see it from outside. The photograph challenges us to think, how did our world come to be? Who are we? How did we get here? Did God make us? And did God step into our world 2,000 years ago in the person of Jesus Christ? Those are great questions that come up every Christmas time, but sometimes they're questions that we can't be bothered to consider amidst all the mayhem of family and presents and food at Christmas. But this Christmas 2020, a year that's been challenging in so many ways, is a great year to consider those deeper questions of the Christmas story. Thank you for joining me. I wish you a very happy Christmas. And for those who live locally in Wimbledon, I invite you to come to Emmanuel Church, either online or to book in in person for one of our Christmas services.